Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back to Cambridge, Massachusetts, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're here at MIT, at the MIT Information Quality Chief Data Officer Forum. Tina Rosario is here. She's the Vice President of Global Operations at SAP, a practitioner really running the data governance operation, right? Mm -hmm. um, welcome. Thank you. Well, data governance, you know, for years data governance was kind of you know, pushed to the background. Now all of a sudden, all this you know, big here. data, information yeah. quality, CDO, it's hot again. Yeah, yeah, So uh, nice that's got to feel that. good, right? Yeah, it does, it does. I read something recently about all these companies starting to get chief data officers, and there's a big push now to get that role in the company, and so it's really nice to see it. Getting well, right. that level of visibility. For years, everybody talked about data. Oh, data is growing so fast. It's such a pain. It's expensive to manage. Storage is so expensive. No, it, it's almost like that bit flipped two years ago. And data now is the you know, new oil. It's the new source of competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So how much of that is, is real versus kind of bromide? Well, I think that you know, the importance of data at our company is, be, is coming to the forefront. We use it in so many facets, from the executive all the way down to the tactical layperson, from you know getting insight into our customers to processing our orders and our invoicing, building relationships with our vendors, um, we consider that to be a top priority for us. And over the years, have invested in building out this data management capability internally. It had taken a while. I mean, I think it was a little tough in the very beginning. Um, but once we had that executive sponsorship, that sense of momentum then it really took off over the past few years. Well, it comes from the top, too. So, I mean, McDermott yeah. tells this great story about how SAP ordered like thousands and thousands of iPads when they first came out, and Steve Jobs called them and said, why are you doing all these iPads? You're enterprise and ERP. And he said, no, we are transforming our company. Mobile yeah. is the future. So how, yeah. how has that affected sort of your role in the just data governance generally? Yeah, absolutely. So what we see now is it's much more distributed. So it's not just data on premise, on a laptop connected to a network, it's now data on an iPad, or it's data on your, in the old days it was a Blackberry, right? Or it's data on some device, and it's much more distributed, and because of that, it requires much more governance, because there's more flexibility, there's more freedom, where somebody can go and say, hey, I think I'm going to update data from my iPad, and oh, my fingers are so big, I can't get to the keys. <laughs> um, and so we certainly find that it becomes much more important for us to have good data governance at the onset and to have systems mm -hmm. and processes and tools to make sure that when data comes in, that it's clean, that it's not duplicated, that it's of the highest level of quality. And in reality, if it can't, then we go in and enrich it and make sure that it meets our standards before it becomes part of our common database. Mm -hmm. So uh, do, do you have a chief data officer, or multiple chief data officers at SAP? We don't have that role formally, but we do have people in my organization and people at the C level who respect the data position and who give us their sponsorship and support. So you're essentially the CDO, de facto, is that fair? Or are there uh, multiple de facto CDOs? Yeah, I think that uh, my boss, Maria Villar, is essentially the, the CDO, data czar, the okay. data czar without having that title, but she's empowered to run the data management capability for the company. Just out of curiosity, what is your title? My title? No, your boss's title. Oh, she's the um, Global Vice President for Data Governance and Management. Okay, and she reports to... She reports into operations. Okay, yeah, not to so. the CIO, obviously. We have such a discussion here about where the CDO yeah. should report. It's kind of... Yeah. It, it's. I don't want to say it's academic, it's important where, where the role sits in the organization. Yeah. Um, is that changing? Is that evolving um, in terms of the reporting yeah, I structures? I think it varies or? by company, but the way I look at it is who cares the most about it? Who's got the most passion? Who can fund it? Mm -hmm. I think is a biggie for us because it follow is the a, money, is this right? Say. Exactly. <laughs> follow the money. Follow the passion. Follow the political clout. So somebody really has to step up and say, you know, this is important, and I'm willing to put my political capital on the table for it. I mm -hmm. think that's also important. And um, somebody who they don't necessarily need to understand the details, but can build the right team. So it can bring in the right people, like what we did in SAP, is bring in a bunch of folks who had that level of data expertise and let them do what they do best and not get in their way. Um, I wonder if we can just take a quick step back, and this is a very basic question, but I think data governance as a term is a little bit fuzzy for some people. 
how would you define data governance? What are the components that go into a data governance program? Um, because I think a lot of people, they kind of get it at a high level. Okay, we're going to make sure these are rules around how data is used. And, you know, maybe some rules around so we make sure we comply with regulations, things like that. Yeah. But at its heart, what is data governance all about? Yeah, um, we try and keep it simple right, as much as we possibly can. And uh, we consider it to be around four key capabilities. The first capability is having good uh, organization and good practices around data governance, which means rules, standards, policies. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the right processes, the right engineered processes for simplifying how data is created, updated, and maintained. The third one is we look at data from an ongoing maintenance point of view. So what are the right operations? What are the right tools to automate the maintenance of data because we know it decays? And then the fourth one is having good technical solutions. So having good business-driven IT solutions. And so everything that we do centers around those four capabilities. We try and when we talk to folks within SAP, we, we don't use you know, data speak. So I think even the word governance is kind of a data speak word. Mm -hmm. We try to drill that down into just regular business language. Like you can say data quality is very conceptual. We try and break that down and say, okay, what is, a, what is required by the business? What are the most critical bits of information that you need to run your business process? Let's focus on those critical fields and let's focus on that critical set of information, and that's what we're going to govern. What are the sources of that information? What's the currency of that information? Exactly. How do we reconcile the differences? I and mean, this is the language that you guys use. Exactly. And then ultimately, what's the single version of the truth that we're going to rely on that everybody will agree to? That is the, the yeah. right number. Even if it's not right today, we'll make it right. We'll right. work on making exactly. that one right. Exactly. I mean, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, gosh, my data is really bad. I've got to focus on that today. <laughs> but they do wake up in the morning and say, this process is broken, mm -hmm. and I can't get the information that I need. It's not trusted. It's not accessible. It's not accurate. So we try and think of it from those points of view and say, what can we do to better enable those business processes to run more efficiently? How can we get the data to them faster, quicker, and with the right level of content? So now, is there a tension between some of the data governance uh, functions that you do and some of the data analytics functions that maybe the business wants to do. Maybe they want to do new types of analysis that, um, you know, to, to, to look for new insights. Uh, and maybe, you know, do you ever have the occasion where your organization will say, well, wait a minute, that's going to cause some, some issues with the quality of the data, or, you know, that might not be uh, the most uh, appropriate way to use data, things like that. Is there a tension between the analytics and the governance? No, I mean, I think the opposite. I think we work very closely together. I think it's our job in terms of governance and management to make sure that the data is at the right level of quality and is at the right level of standards so the analytics people don't have to spend time normalizing, rationalizing, right? So that yep. it's accessible to them and there's that, there's that handshake there. Mm -hmm. um, and so we get requirements from them. They might come to us and say, okay, we're about to run this report. We need this level of data. Can you help make sure that we get it from the right source, that it's at the right level of quality, and that it's available to us? So I think it's a very, you know, very symbiotic relationship between us. And we need them to help drive our data analytics. Mm -hmm. So it's not just business analytics, but it's also data analytics. So we look to use tools like SAP's Information Steward, and we use those tools to go in and analyze the current level of data quality. And mm -hmm. so we have a good partnership there where they provide us access to those tools and their analytical capabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the, some of the things that, that you're working on today? What are the you know, main priorities within your organization? What if you could talk about that a little bit and some of the challenges that you're having executing on those and yeah. how you're dealing with that? Yeah, I'd say the biggest one for us these days is the cloud. Okay. So SAP's vision is to become the cloud company. And so with that comes cloud capabilities internally. And so how do we data govern in the cloud? What does that mean to us? We're in a hybrid environment where we've got some on-premise, some on the cloud, as we're moving more and more to the cloud. What does that mean? How do we make sure that we would say we do no harm? We don't want the cloud to come in and harm all the good data quality work that we've done. So how do we work in this new distributed environment where we've got multiple sources of data coming in? We've got the cloud, we've got um, on-prem, we've got um, acquisitions, we've got um, the SAP store online, right? Mm -hmm. We've got various partnerships. ways, partnerships, yep. yes. Um, so I think it's becoming much more distributed 
And some might say that's much more complex. I see it as a, you know, just an opportunity for us to have more governance and to spread that governance across all these various channels. Well, if you can get it right, then you can get it right for your customers, right? So, uh, okay, take, it, take an example of acquisition. So you, you, you acquire success factors. It's been a couple of years now, right? Yeah. So now, presumably, you're taking you know, core SAP HR and success factors, bringing it together. Yeah. Uh, you got on-prem in the cloud, yeah. and you have two totally different data governance models, I presume. Is that an, a good example of one where you had to, had to dig in? Are you still, still digging into that? Or? Yeah, I mean, our philosophy for an acquisition has been, we all have one governance model, mm -hmm. not two disparate. So they come in and they adopt to our requirements. So when we bring that data in from an acquisition, we make sure that it meets our standards. And frankly, if it doesn't meet our standards, it gets pushed back, right? We draw that hard line that says, you know, you've got to go back and you've got to give us the content that we need or it won't come into our central database, right? Um, and then we educate them and teach them what does da data governance mean because an acquired company may not even know what data governance is. They may not have had any practices to begin with. So we make sure that they understand what our requirements are, what our processes are, and that they adhere to them. So that, that's a, is that that's an a transition time period. Right? Yeah, but, not is, but is it an unfunded mandate for that division or that acquiree? And, and they have to I mean, they might have put engineering resources on that or, or other to, resources. Yeah. And, yeah. And you're not going to pay for it, and right. you know, you know, that's not your role. Right. But you have the authority to basically say, yeah. sorry, it doesn't get in here. Okay, yeah. so you're the gatekeeper. Yeah, exactly. And we, we draw a pretty hard line, right? I and mean, you get executive support on that, obviously. If you don't, then it doesn't work, right? Yeah, we do, for sure. I mean, we, we had a painful experience years ago, and we learned a lot from that, right? Uh -huh. We learned a lot from that pain and said, never again will we just open the floodgates and say everything comes in. We won't do that, right? We'll, we'll take a very structured, a very managed, a very disciplined approach to any of the acquisitions. Okay, any other sort of last minute thoughts on advice you would give to other practitioners that are trying to solve some complex problems? Yeah, I would say, you know, I mentioned about, you know, the business speak, try not to use too much data speak, um, know your business, uh, try and reduce the complexities as much as you possibly can, look for the simplest road, the path of least resistance, Get a lot of friends, we say that quite a lot, right? Get a lot of friends of data. Find those friends in the company that can help support your cause and persevere, right? Um, what I used to say, the three Ps, right? Be persuasive with your messaging and business words. Um, persevere through all the organization changes that you may find, right? Stick to what you know to be the truth um, and, you know, be, um, and, and be diligent, be committed. The third P. I can't remember what it means, but I know I, I always say press on, right? there you go. But definitely the persuasion and the perseverance, right? Thick skin. Mm. Right. Yeah. Great. All right, Tina, we'll leave, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, look forward to seeing you down the road. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We'll be right back. <laughs>